Welcome everyone to the 2021 CMC review. I'm Steven and thanks everyone for coming today. Okay, before we start, I would like to do a little advertisement for myself. So I have a YouTube channel. I post videos on YouTube regularly and you could uh, use the following link to get there and make sure to subscribe and like my videos. And this uh, meeting will also be recorded and will later be posted on the on this YouTube channel. So if you miss anything, you could always uh, check it, check the video out afterwards. I also have my own mass league. Uh, it's the Young Mass League. It is free. It is uh, currently being used as a resource for the Saskatchewan Teacher Society. There are two different levels. One level is for elementary school, that is for grade eight or under, and the other level is for grade nine to 12. Happens weekly, uh, happens weekly on every weekend. And uh, you only need to register, it is free, and you only need 30 minutes. There's six questions uh, on the mass league every weekend. And if you want to register for my Lastly, you could email me at stevenyang.math at gmail.com or you can scan this QR code on the bottom right to add my mom and she will send you the registration link. Okay, now let's get into the questions. So is there any specific questions that you guys want to look at? You could, uh, you could type it in the chat. Okay, I see an A3. Okay, there's a question. How do you study for a math competition? And what resource do you use for that? Uh, you just use past, uh, past real contest. Okay, so now let's start with A3. Okay, so the... Questions are already posted on the Canadian Math Society. You could go there and check out the questions. Okay, so we'll start at A3. Okay, it says in the question, two circles, each with radius five units, are drawn in the coordinate plane such that their centers A and C have coordinates 0, 0, and 8, 0, respectively. So in this graph, you have seen A is here and C is here. And I ask you how many, how many points of the plane were both coordinates are integer lie within the intersection of these circles, including its boundary. Okay, so first let's look at uh, what coordinate that is, is on the, on the circle center C. Okay, so it says the radius is five units. So if you go five units to the right, you will have this point is five zero. Also, if you look at uh, this point, so this will be eight minus five. So this, is, this will be three zero. We know that these two points are definitely inside this region. Also, there's a point with integer uh, coordinate that is also in this region. So this is a four zero. Okay, so we know these three points are inside the intersection region. And now if we, go up by one. So if you go here, oh, maybe I'll use a different color. So if you go here, then this three one point, so let's look at point three one. So the distance between three one and eight zero is equal to sweet, uh, eight minus three squared plus one squared and take the square root of that. So that is square root of 0.6. And this is greater than five. So this point right here is not inside the region. And likewise, this point right here is also not in the region. Uh, so that means only the point four, uh, four one is in the region. Okay, so then we have two more points uh, starting going up from here. So eventually you get to four, three. 
at point four three, you have distance to one of the um, one of the centers is exactly five because four squared plus three squared, square root of four squared plus three squared is five. So we know that if you go up, then there's another three points. And now if you go down, you also know there's also three points. Okay. So in total, we'll have three that's on right here, three above the x-axis and three below x-axis. So in total, we'll have, so in total, we'll have nine points uh, that lie within the intersection of these circles. Okay, is everyone good for this question? Okay, is there any other questions that you guys want to look at? Uh, okay. Um, question B3, question B3. Uh, okay, maybe I'll do A1 first. Uh, okay, the well, question A1 is straight up uh, algebra manipulation. Okay, so we have this condition. You're given this condition. I want you to find this expression. So this condition basically tells you x squared minus 4 is equal to 2021. And this condition will simplify into x squared minus 1. I want you to find this. You're given x squared minus four, you want to find x squared minus one. So you just add three to both sides. You have x squared minus one is equal to 2021 plus three is equal to 2024. So our answer is 2024. Okay, are good for A1. Okay, now let's get to B3. Okay. There is actually many different ways to solve this problem, but I'll present the most elegant one that I found. Okay, so first we draw a perpendicular line from P to X, Y. So this is perpendicular. Uh, let's call this point M. And let P, M be X, let X, M be a and M Y B B. Okay, so we're given A X is five, A Y is ten, A Y is ten right here, B Y is two. So then you're able to find the length of X B. So you have X Y squared is equal to X A squared plus A Y squared, and that is equal to five squared plus 10 squared, and that is equal to 125. Okay, also you'll know that xy squared is equal to uh, by squared plus bx squared. So you know xy squared is equal to 125. Then by squared, you know by is equal to two, so by squared is equal to four. So then you, you can find bx squared. So then you can find bx squared is equal to 125 minus four. So that is 121. So then you'll know bx is equal to 11, right? Okay, now, uh, okay, it wants you to find the area of this triangle pxy. So you only need to find this x because we kind of already know xy. So from here, we can know x, y is equal to square root of uh, square root of 125. So that is simplifies into five square root of five. So all we need to find is this PM, so this x value. Okay, now look for similar triangles. So you know this angle, so this angle is the same for P, X, M and B, X, Y. Also, this is a right triangle. This is a right angle. Also, this is a right angle. So we'll have a triangle P, X, M is, uh, is, is similar to 
is similar to triangle uh, uh, y, y, x, b. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now let's focusing let's focus on this angle. So the tangent angle, uh, basically b x y is equal to uh, x over a. That is also equal to uh, this two over eleven. So. This is also equal to two over 11. So this condition will simplify into uh, 11 over two X is equal to A. Okay, let's look for other pair of similar triangles. So this angle is the same for P, Y, M and A, Y, uh, A, Y, X. So we take the tangent of that angle. So we'll have uh, tangent angle A, Y, X a y x is equal to, so that will be uh, x over b, and that will be that will equal to five over ten. So this condition will then simplify into two uh, x is equal to b. Okay. Okay. So now we have determined a and b in terms of x. So this is equal to eleven over two x, this is equal to 2x. We also know that uh, a plus b is equal to xy is equal to 5 square root of 5. So we substitute in x and uh, substitute in b and a and b for x. So we have 11 over 2x plus 2x is equal to 5 square root of 5. So all we have is 15 over 2x is equal to 5 square root of 5. So then you solve for x, you get, uh, uh, this is equal to two times square root of five over three. Okay, so you, we have found x. So then uh, the area of triangle PXY will be just, uh, PXY is it's just one half times the height. The height is x, which is, um, two times square root of five over three, uh, and then times, uh, that's the base, that's x, y. So that is five square root of five. So then you have uh, this two cancel out, and then five uh, square root of five times five times square root of five is equal to 25 over three. So our answer should be 25 over three. Okay, everyone good for this? Yes, thank you. That helps a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, B1. Okay, this here's B1. It's kind of a trap question, I think. Okay, so it says a bag contains two regularly shaped uh, cubic dice that are identical in size. One dice has the number two on every side and the other die has number two on three sides, and a number four on, a number four on each side opposite to one that has number two. You pick a die and look at one side of it, observing a number two, what is the probability that the opposite side of the die has number two as well? Okay, so, so the first die, you have every side is two. So these are six sides, so every side is two. Uh, and every opposite side is two. So the opposite of two is also two. So this is the first die. And then the second die. Oh, second die. Uh, okay, so it says there's a four on the opposite side of every two and there are three twos. So because there are six sides in total, then three of the sides are two, three of the sides are four. So you have three, two, and uh, three, four. On the opposite of two, four, uh, on the opposite of two, you have a four. And on the opposite of four, you have a two. 
Okay, so this is the, the second, how the second guys look like. Okay, uh, now you're given that you picked a die and looked at one side and you observe a two. Okay, so you picked a die and you observe the two. So there's three cases in the second die and there, there are um, six cases in the first die. So in total, there are nine ways you can observe you can observe a two. And out of the nine ways, I ask you, what is the probability the opposite side of the die also has a number two? Okay, so you have six of these, the, the opposite, the six cases, the opposite side will have a number two, but three other cases will have four. So six out of the nine cases will succeed. So the answer should be two thirds. It should be two thirds. Okay, everyone good for this question? Oh yeah. Yeah, thank yes. you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, any other questions they want us to specifically look at? Uh, uh, B4, B4, B4. 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 Okay, B4. Okay, so I ask you uh, the equation. This has exactly n solutions. What okay. is sin? Okay, that is actually sine of x. So sine of x represents. Uh, so here you have a right triangle. So here you have uh, this. Uh, this angle is x. Sine of x is basically the ratio of this side to this side. So it's the opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, good, on the definition. Okay, if you want to compute the solution, then it's actually too difficult. So what you do is you draw the, you draw the graph for these two functions and count the number of intersections. Okay, so let's start with, start on the positive x side. So sine of x looks look like this. Okay. And x over 2021 pi, okay, this is a straight line with slope one over 2021. This is a, quite a small slope. So this line will some, look something like this. Okay. So we know sine is a periodic function with period two pi. So at x is equal to two pi. Here, uh, the, the next one repeats. Okay, so inside this two pi period, you have two, two intersections. And if you extend this, eventually you get to four pi and between, so between zero to two pi, you have two intersections. And between two pi to four pi, there will be um, another two intersections. Okay, so eventually you'll get to, um, okay, say this line is actually x equal to um, 2018 pi. Okay, here is x is equal to 2020 pi, 2020 pi. And here you have x is equal to 2022 pi. 2022 pi, okay. So at x is equal to 2018 pi, you have, we still have this value slightly less than one. So, so line, x over 2021, so you have this line that looks like this. Okay. Here, let's say x is equal to 2021 pi. Okay, so at x is equal to 2021 pi, you have, you have this, this is at 2021 pi at one. Okay, so when this line goes beyond one, then, this line no longer intersect uh, the sine wave. Okay, 
But before 2021 pi, you still have two intersections for each two pi period, right? Okay, so then, so you start at zero to two pi, you have two intersections, two pi to four pi. So until you get to 2020 pi to 2022 pi cycle, you still have two intersections. But beyond uh, 2022 pi, uh, you have zero intersections. Okay, so this is on the positive side. The negative side is actually symmetrical to the, to the, the negative side is symmetrical to the positive side. So we could just double it. So here uh, there are, um, so there will be 2022 intersections on the positive side and 2022 intersections on the negative side. However, the answer is not 4044 as you might think. The first intersection in zero to two pi is actually x is equal to zero. So this has been counted twice in both the positive side and the negative side. So you must subtract one from the total number of intersections that we count. So we have, so we have uh, 4,044 minus one. So our ans final answer should be 4,043. The answer should be uh, 4,043. Okay, everyone good for this question? No? It's not the 2021. Oh, sorry. It's not the 2021, the final answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, final, the final answer is not the 2021 because uh, from zero to 2022, the only had uh, 20, 20, oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, so, okay, thank you. Okay, um, well then look at question B2. Uh, okay, so, okay, so it wants you to find the coefficient of x to the 2021. Okay, how, it, how can we get X is a 2021. So we could have, we could pick X is a 2021 with some coefficient times, some coefficient times one. So basically X is a zero to power. So you have the coefficient of these two multiplied together times X times 2021. Or you could have some coefficient times 2020, 2020 in the first one times something uh, X to the, first power. Okay, and this pattern continues. Okay, so in the first case, you have uh, the coefficient is 221 times negative one. And in the second, uh, in the second case, you have 220 times one. And then this pattern continues. So you have a negative 2021 and a positive 2020. So next will be a negative uh, 2019 and then the next will be positive 2018. So at the end we'll have uh, some coefficient times X and we multiply some coefficient times X to 2020. So this will be just um, uh, one times, now if you look at the coefficient of 2020 is a negative one. So in the end we'll have this negative one. So the so last one is negative one. Okay, so all we need to do then is to add all these, all these numbers together. Okay, first let's group them up. So we have negative 2021, positive 2020. So if we add these two together, we'll get one. And then we group the next one. So that is negative 2019 and 2018. So you group these together, you have another one. 
Okay, so until until you can group negative three and two, so this will also give you a one. And then uh, the last negative one just is, uh, oh, sorry, this is all negative. So then we're left with the last negative. So in the first row here, we have, um, so we have exactly 1,010 groups. So the sum for the first 2,020 terms will be negative 1,010. And then we're left with this, the negative one in the end. So we add another negative one. So our answer should be negative 1,011. So our answer is negative 1,011. Okay, everyone good for this question? Okay, I, I see a request for C4. Maybe I'll do the question at the end if we have to. Okay, C1. Okay, this year's C1 is a very time consuming question. Okay, so, so first we have determine all points P, X, Y such that 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and P are vertices of a parallel line. Okay. If we draw the coordinate plane and then label these points. Uh, so we have 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Okay, so then we want to find another vertice such that this is a this is a parallelogram. Okay, we know. Okay, if we look at any parallelogram and draw in the two diagonals, we see that there is six lines in total. And if we pick any of the three points out. So let's say we pick three three points out and connect the lines with them. We see that two lines are on the outside of the parallelogram. Okay, so here we're given here we're given uh, three points. So two of the lines must be on the outside, and one of them must be a diagonal. Okay, so let's say these two lines are on the outside. Then we could fill in the parallel lines accordingly. So we will end up with this point is the. Uh, is point P. Okay. Or we could have, uh, uh, we have these two lines as the outside. So then we fill in the parallel points accordingly. So we have this point plus point P. And then in the end, we could also have uh, these two point, these two lines as, as the outside of the, a parallelogram. So we fill in the other lines accordingly. So we have this point. Okay. So looking, so looking at this diagram, you have uh, you have three points, and they are they are uh, zero, one, two, one, and zero, negative one. So these three are the points. Uh, these three, these three points are a possibility for point P. Okay, now let's look at part B. Two parallel lines intersect the parabola x is equal to y squared at four different points, such that oh, these two lines are parallel. Okay, let's uh, use B. Okay, so let, let the coordinate of point Q be, uh, since this is on the parabola, so we have Q squared Q, so let this be point Q. Uh, so then we, we take a look at which, which, two po which two lines are parallel. Okay, so there are three cases. So one case is, Q squared Q is parallel and line uh, zero, zero is parallel to line one, one to nine, three. And the second case is 
the q squared q line q squared q to the one one is parallel to zero zero to nine three. And lastly, we have uh, q squared q to nine three is parallel to line zero zero to one one. Okay, so then there's if two lines are parallel, then their slope must be the same. So in the first case, we have q uh, p squared minus oh sorry uh, should be y value. Okay, so it is q minus zero over q squared minus zero is equal to one over one minus three over uh, one minus nine. So this will become one over Q is equal to, uh, so here you have a negative two. So this is one over four. So this, this will give you Q is equal to four. And therefore um, the coordinate for Q is 16, four. Okay, now let's look at the second case. So Q minus one over Q squared minus one is equal to, uh, zero minus three over zero minus nine. So this simplifies into one over Q plus one is equal to one over three. So this you have Q is equal to two. So in this case, the coordinate for Q is uh, four, four, two. Okay, lastly, you have the last case. So in this case it will be Q minus three over Q squared minus nine. One is equal to zero minus one over zero minus one. So this will tell you that Q plus three over one is equal to one. So this tells you Q is equal to negative two. So the coordinate of Q in this, in this case is four negative two. So these, these three points are the only possibility of Q. Okay, now let's look at part C. We still have two parallel lines intersect at parabola x is equal to y squared at four different points, zero, zero, one, one, a squared, a, and v. Uh, here, a does not equal to zero or plus or minus one. It's a real number. It wants you to find all possible points for v. Okay. Similar to part b, we let uh, well, the coordinate of v be the uh, v squared and v. Okay, similar to part b, we also have three cases. So uh, you have v squared v, line v squared v to zero, zero is parallel to line one, one to a squared a. This is the first case. So the second case is uh, v squared v to one one is parallel to line zero zero to a squared a. And the last case is v squared v to line to point a a squared a is parallel to line zero zero to one one. Okay. So we look at the slope again. So in the first case, we must have v minus zero over v squared minus zero is equal to one minus a over one minus a squared. So this will simplify into one over v is equal to uh, one plus a over one. So this tells you that v is equal to a plus one. So in this case, the coordinate of v is uh, so you have small v is equal to a plus one. So this will tell you this is the x coordinate is a squared plus two a plus one. And the y coordinate is uh, a plus one. Okay, now let's look at the second case. So in the second case we have, so v minus one over v squared minus one is equal to, uh, I guess an actual bracket. Okay, so is equal to zero minus a over zero minus a squared. This will simplify into one over v plus one is uh, 
equal to one over a. So this tells you that v is equal to a minus one. So in this case, the coordinate of v is equal to um, a squared minus two a plus one and a minus one. Okay, now we have the last case to consider. So in this case, we'll have v minus a over v squared minus a squared is equal to zero minus one over zero minus one. So this will simplify into v plus a over one is equal to one. So this tells you um, v plus a is equal to one. So we can solve for v, we get v is equal to one minus a. So in this case, the coordinate of v is equal to this squared is same as a minus one squared. So that is a squared minus uh, two a plus one and one minus a. So the only three possible coordinates for v is these three. And we could check using the value in part B. So in part B, you have, you basically have uh, A is equal to three, right? So you could, if you check this, you have, this is so three squared plus two times three plus one, comma A plus one. So this is equal to nine plus six, so that is 15 plus one. So this is 16, four. So that matches our answer for part B right here. And in the second case, we could verify it by plugging in A. So we have, uh, so three squared minus two times three plus one, and three minus one. So that is equal to so nine minus six is three plus one is four, so four, two. And this also matches our answer in part B. And lastly, we have this one. So when we plug in v is equal to three, we have, uh, so this is equal to three squared minus two times three plus one, and one minus three. So here you have nine minus six plus one, that is four again, so four and negative two. And this also matches with our answer in, um, in part b, the four and negative one. Okay, so these three are the only three coordinates for this problem. So everyone good for this? Okay. I think we'll end here for today. We'll I'll also host another session for the CMC review maybe in the next week. And make sure to check out the video on the YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye.